In croup, also known as laryngotracheum bronchitis, our classic patient is going to be a child who is between the ages of six months and three years. And classically, this child is going to present with a barking or seal-like cough, as well as hoarseness and inspiratory strider. Depending on the particular patient, they may also present with a low-grade fever, rhinorrhea, which is a runny nose, as well as a history of a preceding upper respiratory infection. This is because the pathophysiology of this condition is typically going to be parainfluenza. However, other less common causes of croup include RSV, rhinovirus, influenza, and adenovirus. And ultimately, croup is going to involve the subglottic airway. This should not be surprising to us because the subglottic airway is consistent with this being an extrathoracic obstruction, which is the reason why this condition is going to result in inspiratory strider. As we discussed previously in our discussion of extrathoracic obstructions, the subglottic airway is going to extend from the true vocal cords down to the upper one-third of the trachea. This is because the initial two to three centimeters of the trachea as it descends is going to not involve the thoracic cavity up to approximately this point here. Ultimately, consistent with this involvement of the subglottic airway, we're going to have this narrowing of the trachea as you can see in this schematic. This is what is ultimately going to lead to the extrathoracic obstruction and classically is going to result in what is referred to as a steeple sign, which we will see in the coming slides on an x-ray. And this is particularly high yield for croup and frequently shows up on examinations. In many cases, croup can be diagnosed clinically as it has a very classic presentation and age range we should also have these patients on a pulse ox in order to monitor their oxygenation. And ultimately, if there's any ambiguity in terms of the diagnosis, we can get a chest x-ray, which is classically going to show a steeple sign. This steeple sign can be appreciated on the right-hand side of the presentation, where you can see in this chest x-ray that there is clearly this narrowing of the upper trachea. This is consistent with an obstruction of the subglottic airway, which is ultimately going to produce the inspiratory strider that we see in these patients. In terms of management, we treat croup with the use of dexamethasone, which is a steroid. Additionally, we should also give racemic epinephrine if we see any of the following signs and symptoms. These include having strider at rest, retractions, agitation, or having cyanosis or pallor. The dexamethasone helps to knock down some of the inflammation that is involving the larynx and the trachea. While the racemic epinephrine helps to open up the bronchi, leading to bronchodilation and improved breathing in these patients. However, we should reserve the racemic epinephrine for any of these cases that we've described below.